Hey guys, how's it going? Happy New Year's Eve. I am so excited to be able to finally announce that we were able to buy some property from our neighbor. The last pieces of property that attaches to what we currently have. And we've been working on this deal for a really long time and I've been wanting to talk about it for so long. We've been dropping like subtle hints over the last few weeks, which we normally don't do that. Maybe but not it was even like bubbling. So subtle. <laughs> yeah, the excitement was just kind of like bubbling out of me. Uh, we've been talking with our neighbor about possibly doing this for years now, uh, but we didn't come to an actual agreement until this summer. In fact, Aaron shook hands with Salvador, our neighbor, when Greg was here installing the pond. That was how long this act the the deal actually took to go through. And the reason why it took so long is that we had to get approval from the county because we were redrawing property lines and so on and so forth. So we. Had had to go through that whole rigmarole and I uh, finally got it all done. We signed today actually. So uh, and I'm thankful that we finally signed because the fence that you just watched go in <laughs> that actually went in before the deal had gone through 100%. We knew that uh, we were in the clear by the time they started this project. But anyway, we're going to walk through the entire thing, just do a little tour here. Uh, we had, you know, new fence installed, some of our old fence taken out to make more sense of how everything's laid out. Um, so the pieces of property, there's two acres back here, which if you look this way, you can see our barn, just kind of a quick perspective. In fact, maybe let's take an overhead look. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Take an overhead look uh, just to see how these pieces attach. So we have our initial property that we purchased. And then the next one was the South Garden and then the dirt lands. And then we were able to do four acres in two different pieces. So about two acres in front of the Persephone Garden that also attaches to the dirt lands and the two acres right back here. So hopefully that's helpful to see how it all goes together. And that brings our total acreage to just right about 12 acres, right? And that's it. I mean, that's the last pieces of land that actually attached to ours. I mean, there's there's other land, like if we kept going, but nothing's for sale and I don't feel like we need to at this point. <laughs> like we kind of uh, hedged in ourselves here and this is going to give myself the kids and Aaron so many fun opportunities. So I wanted to start back here because this is probably the most exciting part to me. They put this barn in like three, four years ago, I think, and they had some horses out here. The kids just loved watching them. I loved watching them. And it's kind of a bucket list item for me. I don't think it's gonna probably happen in 2024. Who knows? Um, it might be 2025. We've got to work on the infrastructure, electrical, water, getting pasture fences, you know, put up. All of that has to happen before we go ahead with, uh, you know, putting animals out here, but it's just exciting to think about. So this barn here, let's just go in, take a look. It's broken up into quarters. So two of the stalls have outdoor runs. I don't, I don't know the proper terms for all of that. I have so much to learn, uh, but we can walk through one of these and come right through here. I think that the in oh I'm sorry no, you got it yeah. okay I think the interior is about 15 feet this way and close to that this way and the outside if you come on through here is also about 15 by 15 and I just like the idea if you know we're having really crappy weather and we need to put the horses in their stalls they could still like they still have the ability to go in and out and they have plenty of room the other one though so there's the two here this one and that one. The third stall does not have an outdoor run, but there's room outside where we can put one in if we decide to. And so that's this one right here. They had, I think they had three horses. There was a, a foal, one of them had a baby, and then there was two adult horses. And then this area right here for tack and feed and so on and so forth. And I'm so excited, like this afternoon, I'm gonna get out here with a gator, with a trailer, and a rake and the blower and I just kind of want to start you know picking things up and sprucing stuff up oh so excited there's Russell which I'm sure he's spent quite a bit of time over here already let me show you where the property line is if you come around this side this is where we could put another outdoor run see there's plenty of space it actually goes all the way down this hill to the fence it's just a like a hardware cloth sort of fence can you see that okay uh, it's pretty sloped. I walked down it earlier today, but it goes all the way. If you follow the white fence, it just goes down the hill and then it goes straight across to just beyond where that little hut is, which there's some kind of a pump down there, Erin. We're going to figure out. I know there's another well up here for this piece. 
I don't know what's going on with that little hut area. Well, you know, I think that there there might be an irrigation ditch down there. Oh, and or so it's was. possible that at one point they were pumping water up oh, here. Oh, sure. In fact, I know that there's like water rights that are attached to the property. Uh -huh. I have no idea. We have to figure all that yeah. out. That's why I, I, I say like, you know, one day we'll have some animals out here, but I, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I want to make sure that we have everything lined out and um, that everything's ready in that way. I think right here would be such a fun space to toss some wildflower seeds out on this hill, like a dry land mix. I think that would be awesome. And then right around here, I think we need to build this up a little bit. Maybe not very far, like maybe out to here, bring in some dirt, have a retaining wall and a fence put in just in case you want to, you know, animals need to come out the backside. You will have plenty of space to do that. What's Russell doing? <laughs> He's loving being out here. It's such a nice day, you guys. I mean, you can see we still have a little bit of snow from the day after Christmas, but um, it's warming up. We have a 51 degree day on the forecast. Okay. I'm going to head this direction toward this little, it's kind of a chicken coop slash their garden. Really this, nice tree right here. I like is, this one a lot. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is a sensation box elder. There's a couple of those. All the trees you just saw on the hillside, those are a mixture of like elm, which they're not nice elms. They're kind of trashy elms and silver uh, poplars. We'll probably keep them there for now because they do provide nice shade. So in this area here, you can see the irrigation pipes. They had uh, raised beds, which they took with them. Um, so this kind of cleared this area up. This uh, uh, little hut, they had a chicken coop in the back. She'll have the nesting boxes. And then there was a bunch of supplies in here. I think there was a table right in here with a bunch of their gardening things. We're gonna probably take this hutch down. In fact, Aaron, you were thinking of possibly looking into a I think set a playset would for the work kids. well over here. Yeah, it really would because it does include the basketball court as well, which as you know is directly behind our pond. We are planning on taking those big lights down, but we're going to leave for now the court where it's at because I think it'll be fun. Aaron bought new nets. We're going to put those out maybe today. And you can see we got a Aaron also bought a couple of new basketballs. Anyway, yeah, they had some chickens in here but it's pretty solid like it doesn't look like it would be very solid but it kind of is <laughs> anyway we're we'll work on uh, kind of piecing that stuff out a lot of this is just going to become pasture in this area there's a few berms we'll walk by both of well there's maybe three out here we'll walk by all of them there's rocks and pavers that we will get rid of and i don't know is this a weeping mulberry i think it's massive what do you want to do with that one Aaron? We could leave it leave for now. It. I do want to get rid of the rocks and the and the berm. Yeah. Same with this one. This berm over here actually has a couple of fruit trees. I think they were apples. I don't I really understand also, why these berms got put in. <laughs> me either. Also, this right here I think was for a pergola. Like there's there's little brackets that hold beams. This is coming out because this will be pasture. Yeah, this berm here, it's kind of a horseshoe shape. I don't know. Adds a little bit of character interest to the topography here really pretty view you can see the slope out there and on non uh, cloudy days over there you can see the mountain range but yeah we'll find a home a new home for all these rocks and all the pavers and then the trees will come out and then all along this area we'll have evergreens a mixed border kind of like we do have on the dirt lands uh, and we'll just kind of create that green belt with the pathway through it but behind the barn here we're going to, I don't know, construct something to park gators under. I'm, I'm wanting you to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> My thought was that we should extend the roof line, not exactly as tall as the barn is, but extend the roof line out mm -hmm. and maybe go like 20 feet or so, kind of like a pole barn on the side or the back side of the barn. Yeah. And then we'd have cover and we could put, you know, gators, tractor, things like and that. Kind of just organize the stuff. We've got irrigation supplies back there. So are you thinking like the, the next pitch would be below the window? Um, Maybe right about the window. 
So eliminate the window. Well, you're not going to get a whole lot of light through the window anyway. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so something like that we'll figure out for the back of the barn area so that we can tidy that up. Uh, and then, you know, the evergreens will start right behind the greenhouse. Uh, right now we've got all of the plants we're overwintering sitting back there. Uh, we've also got a bunch of pavers. Come this way. Also, there's a well. Oh, yeah, right there where the white pipe is. The well. Um, our neighbor left a few things. There's some fencing supplies and a couple of other things that we'll grab and, and do something with. Uh, but there, this is where the sheds were, right back here. But yeah, there's quite a bit of space back here. I do think that we're gonna have to have that one blue spruce moved, which is perfect because we'll have it. We actually had Nate, uh, Nathan Millad out from Millad Tree Farm and he already looked at everything that we were thinking, but moving that blue spruce and popping it right over here and starting a nice border for us and for our neighbors to look at uh, because right now this is what they're looking at which is oh they're not really looking at it they're kind of looking at their shed sort of but we want to make sure it's really nice and everything's tidy and these are all the pavers right here we had those taken out already from the other side of the basketball court which we will look at we had a weeping willow taken out already uh, because it was right well it was it needed to come out it had borer damage horribly bad and a bunch of rot um, and anyway it was right in the way of where the fence needed to go anyway so we had the retaining wall taken out right here so these will all go to a new home and we just give them away to whoever like first take first come first serve sort of situation and then had that willow taken out before the fence could go in but anyway the blue spruce will need to come out because we will create a lane right here that will come off of our driveway over there uh, and that's one of the reasons why we didn't do a thing with this space last year after the pond was done we just left it alone because we knew that it was possible you know we didn't know where the lane was going to go or how we, we were going to connect the two properties so i think that would make the most amount of sense to come right through here this uh, birch so, is going to need to move as well yeah we can move that birch as well and it can move to somewhat same area uh, that will be a difficult one to move there's water right under we'll probably break a bunch of pipes and have to fix them it's kind of our our mo around here but anyway uh these fence rails and fence posts were just taken out today so there was a three rail white fence right here. So we're gonna come through and we'll take out the rest of these boards. Um, we'll be able to connect everything. And then the dream stream that comes off of the pond might even come back through this area. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's just so fun. All of the new possibilities just, oh. And the kids have just been loving the idea of coming out here uh, to play. I am excited to take this out. You can hook onto that today. Pop it out. It's a crimson something maple and it struggles every year. It's like the bark is just chipping, coming off of it. It's not happy here. And then, like I mentioned before, the light posts will come out. So we'll still be able to see the backboard from the pond area. But Aaron, you were thinking of 12, 15 foot. Probably 12. 12 foot black chain link fence around the entire court with a few gates, but then we'll plant like a Boston Ivy or a Virginia Creeper, Virginia maybe. Creeper, which is not invasive here. Um, it's just a fast growing, beautiful vine. I know a lot of people will be like, don't do that. Um, but we'll plant that on the, the chain link fence so that it kind of masks this whole area. And we figured, we don't even know if these work. I mean, they might. I think I've seen them on once since we moved in. They don't have bulbs in them, I don't think. Well. But I, I mean, bulbs aren't exactly expensive. No. I The thing is though, we decided that during the months where you're actually out here wanting to play, when it's warm enough, it gets dark so late that we don't want to be out here bouncing basketballs that late at night when we'd actually use these lights for the sake of our neighbors. We don't want to create that kind of noise. So we don't think that the lights are actually that necessary to be out here at this point. Uh, and it'll clean up the view a little bit from our current side. So anyway, over here is where the willow came out. Oh, there is a little bit of a chain link fence right there. I didn't realize that. A short one. So Erin, you might need to remind me, but wasn't it like right here? Yep. Um, so anyway, that came out. This is where the stump was ground out and then the new fence here. So anyway, we're, we will probably be removing the rocks. Um, there's some, I don't I don't know what kind of roses these are. I think they're these are pink. The, uh, yeah, are they these the are the wilds? ones that are yeah, nearly wild. Yeah. Yep. You love those. Maybe we'll I really those. like them, but I don't like them in this spot. Oh really? Well, we can leave them for, well, I guess they won't have water, will they? Well, honestly, they probably will because you know that well, was irrigating everything uh -huh. and I'm probably just gonna keep 
keep going. try to keep doing what he was doing yeah. for the most part um, until we decide to change anything. So just like try to leave things as they are right. unless we decide we want to pull something out. And if we turn back around this way, I mean, we'll have some trees and things along the outside and then probably around the basketball court, but largely like the interior part will be pasture and it might be even more like arena style. It might not even be grass in there. I'm not sure yet the setup because this will be a large grass grass pasture so we actually we had an easement right there was like we actually owned a little bit of this oh yeah technically yeah, sure technically like the fence was there but our property line was technically supposed to be here um and then we ended up going out this far so that we could encompass this tree so that we could be responsible for the care of this um and also can, give us just a path to get yeah to and from and we did put a gate in though so we can get to and from because we're not sure what they've moved out we're not sure if they're going to sell um, or you know what the deal is uh, so we just want to make sure that there's a way in and out between the two of us um, I think that's nice to have right there but this kind of connects the two pieces of property here there was a three rail fence here as well and the thing I love about this new fence right here which we still need to clean it I mean, what a wonderful winter that these guys were actually even able to come out and put in a fence. Well, also the reason they're dirty is that um, that we these are all um, used pieces. They're from our old fence. From our fence that was right in between. Yeah, and right behind you too. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was just it's perfect because usually this time of year it's so frozen and so snowy that you can't do anything. Um, in fact, am I seeing color? What? This is um, two gram, right? Can you believe that? Last week in December, that just totally <laughs> caught my eye. Anyway, usually this time of year, we could never do a project like this. It'd have to wait till spring. So it's nice that we're able to get this part done so we can move on once the weather is, you know, even better than it is now. But I love that this spruce right here, which was the one that we had installed in the gravel, like in that little gravel area before we took out the corner garden in the driveway, uh, it masks this area. Like from most of our views, like especially in the Hartley, you look out and I don't even see this part of the fence. I don't see where the fence ends or where it turns. It's kind of, it's perfectly placed. So the idea is to uh, plant large evergreens all along here as well as the back, uh, kind of a continuation from the back of the dirt lands. There's still some fence posts over there. We'll probably end up over there that they're gonna pull today. Uh, but the whole green belt sort of planting area will be around the whole back of it. Why are you smiling? Well, this was the thing that I couldn't talk about for months because we knew since July that it was, you know, as long as the county signed off on it, which, you know, there's. I've learned through this process that, like, you know, the county is not against you. No, they <laughs> I want think, you to succeed. Yeah, they're on your side. They just want to make sure that people aren't doing something ridiculous or crazy or yeah. something that could harm the future development of the city, mm -hmm. you know, or, or county, I guess. Yeah. But, um, so, you know, I think that they were, they wanted this to go through as well, but mm -hmm. they just had to make sure that... Everything was in order. Yeah, everything's in order. Yeah. But, it, and it took a little while. But anyway, so the idea all along has been the green belt from the dirt lands all the way along the back here to kind of mask these homes back here and then all the way along this fence and just have a, a thick border of trees and evergreens all the way along. Mm -hmm. And we're also thinking, which I think it's a good idea, You was it last night? Like late at night in bed, you're like, hey, <laughs> this is what I think we should do. We should continue on the grass strip on that's on the west side east. east side east side of um, the, the lane which we'll go up there in a second continue that on put in another three rail that comes right here um, so that it kind of just is a continuation and plant more autumn blaze maples that mulberry tree that's up there is also also full of rot um, and I don't know when it was that we lost that huge branch and then a natural tree came out and they trimmed a bunch out of it and said we might have bought you a couple of years but this tree is full of rot. It's going to come down. Um, and so we've been kind of like laboring with the decision of, do we take it out so it's not a liability? You know, right. I mean, we're not out there standing. Nobody's out there. You know, it's not going to fall on a house. A or house anything. or a structure. Um, but it's still something that's sitting up there that you kind of know is going to possibly be an issue. 
Uh, it just... Well, let's head down there so that we can see from okay. the other perspective. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, and then you guys inside here, uh, pasture. So pasture here and the dirt land interior there. We'll also carve out a spot for composting, uh, which we were talking about possibly putting it back where maybe the palletized items are in the dirt lands now. Um, but we'll see what happens. So eventually this will go. We did have it taken out to here. It did go short all the way to right here, I think, or so. We had this much taken out so that we could access and bring the lane this way. And you can kind of see where this whole thing is in reference to the pond area right there. Okay. Okay, we're on the opposite end of that area now, and I wanted to show you this direction, kind of our current lane, just to give you perspective. So if you swing this way, you can see where the high tunnel is. This is where the three rail fence was that, you know, separated the dirt lands from his grass field right here which there's a goalpost. They used it for soccer seldomly. I mean, all their kids are grown. Well, most of their kids are grown and gone. Um, so they weren't out here all that much. I'm guessing that they used to use it a lot more. But anyway, you can see all the fence posts here. I think Paul's taken all of those, isn't he? So they will be reused. Um, this right here, it actually has a sign on this side of it. This is Land Survey Monument. Please do not disturb. So this was the actual like real property line that I was talking about. So I don't know, eight feet, seven, eight feet or so. But all his sprinklers were in, everything was set, the fence was in, there was no reason why we needed to have this space. Uh, but anyway, this is the area where we could continue on this three rail white fence and keep planting autumn blaze maple. So it's just a continuation of the current idea we have going on. And I do think that that would be really, really pretty. So you guys, this whole area, until we get water infrastructure handled, we plan to, this is not gonna be lawn like this. And he kind of struggled with the irrigation of this, this area. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but there's always, there was always like circles, like really weird. They look like, uh, what are they? Crop circles. Crop circles, <laughs> yeah. But what Aaron plans to do, right, is to just till the whole thing. And we're gonna scatter some dry land pasture mix out here. Let the spring rain bring it up. Uh, and same with the dirt lands here. And that's how we will be handling it, a very low water sort of using sort of situation. Let's walk this way. I'm going to miss the green though. I mean, for a while. It's yeah, just be... in the summer. It'll look really nice in the spring. I, it's going to be hard for me to watch this be tilled up. Yeah. But I know it's good. It'll be great. So we're going to have to take this out right here. I wonder how deep those are. Yeah, I wonder. It looks like this is where they stopped. <laughs> I think they went to go have some lunch. We timed it perfectly. Right here was where the uh, pole was. What year was that? We had one, two, three, four poles removed. Idaho Power came out and they trenched along this way. And the reason why we did it mainly was because we had power lines cutting through the front of our property and to really join the two, the South Garden and our original piece of property, we thought getting those lines out would be a really good idea at that point in time. I'm so glad we did it. And I'm so glad Aaron was like, Let's, can we take this one more out? Because we have to trench anyway along here. And so he got with both of our neighbors. We did not own this and we did not own this at the time. And we just said, hey, can we just pay to have that taken out? Would that be okay? And they were of course like, yes, <laughs> great, do it. And so, you know, sometimes it's worth it to do that, to go the extra mile. Because, you know, if we wouldn't have done that, we would have had a great big pole here, which would have been fine. We could have amassed it, or we could have at this point had it buried as well. But it's so much less expensive to have it all done at the same time than to have them come back out and do it again, even especially just for one pole. At the time they were doing so many that I think it was just like, yeah, sure, we could just pop that out real quick. Carrying on, you can see the oak tree that we planted this fall. And then the back of um, the property lines. I don't think, I think the back of this property line is not as, well, clearly not as straight as the back of this one. This one kind of goes down a hill and then you can see the neighbor's fences and that's where it ends. And our property line for this one is, it kind of like starts here and it kind of weaves through all of the, the brambles back here and the trees and such. Ow. Gosh, that's like a rose. Yeah. What is that? It's like a wild rose. Wow. God. Yeah, there's rose hips right here. And then, like I mentioned before, 
all down this way. It does slope down to the property line, uh, but we won't be messing with the elevation. We're just gonna plant some big evergreens, plant some beautiful deciduous trees, large shrubs like the dirt lands out there and kind of continue on that green belt feel around the exterior of this. It's just so much fun to be able to share the journey of taking what's kind of like raw pieces of property. I mean, this one he kept tidy and he kept nice, uh, but there's not a lot for interest on it. But it's, so it's fun to take a piece of property like that and show you guys how we are attacking. I mean, everybody has a different approach, but how we are approaching uh, creating something with some more beauty on it, some more plant, Mater I want to say material, variety, <laughs> I know, if industry speak, plant material, uh, and then creating areas for animals to be, and we might get a couple cows, we might, I mean, it's just going to be so much fun, I'm so excited, and thank you guys, I mean, huge thank you to all of you who watch our videos and support us in that way, I mean, there's no way we'd be able to do any of this without you watching our videos. Uh, also huge shout out and thank you to our help, Paul and Bethany out here who just do such an amazing job. And we've got other help, you know, Ken and Natalie and um, Brooke and Alyssa. There's just a lot of people who come together to make this happen and uh, allow us to do these fun projects and share them with you guys. So anyway, thank you so much. I hope you have all had a really great year. We'll have a lot to share with you this coming year and we will see you in the next video.